Hi, I'm Scotty. I service, repair and restore vintage and antique mechanical clocks. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. Standard Korean wall clock. 31 day movement, which we're going to take apart and service. You can hear it seems to be ticking all right, so this probably won't be too complicated to fix it up, I wouldn't think but we'll check when we get inside. It has a pretty elaborate pendulum, as a lot of these clocks do. A knockoff of a French Mercury unit from the 1800s. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take the hands off. Undo the nut that's holding them on. Put that aside very gently. Very gently lift up the hand. The first thing we notice is the hand was on upside down. It was on that way. That's the top of the hand. Then once again, very carefully, take up the hour hand. It was on the right way, so that's a plus. Now we've got three small Phillips head screws holding the face on. They're very, very small, but I think we'll be able to get into them with this screwdriver. No, nope, we can't, we need a smaller one, so I'll go and get one. The very fine Phillips head screws. That's the smallest driver I've got, and I had to file the end off it to make it fit. Right, we'll take those three screws out now. Seems to be spinning, we'll come back to that. Take this one out, the second one. turning but not very much a lot of pressure down on it it's got it almost that's the size of the screw Okay, back to the top one again. Moving this time, only just, but it is. Right, now we'll move the face. Lightest piece of aluminium I've ever seen. Use it as a free speed, there's nothing in it. There you can see the movement working. Seems to be in reasonably good nick too, actually. Right, we'll take the movement out. We'll have to take the gong out first. We'll take the movement out. And we can have a look at it. Okay, the gong's gone. Now, we 
we've got another two of those micro Phillips head and the second one over here they come out a bit more easily now we can take the front cowling off and so we can get at the movement larger Phillips head screws on this This one. Second one. Hmm. I need two screws holding the movement in. So there's our movement. We'll get rid of the case. We'll come back and take the movement to pieces. There's our movement. Before we take the movement apart, we always have a look first to see if there's any broken, bent, damaged parts on the movement that we can see at this time teeth missing, etc. As I said before, this movement seems to be in, in pretty good nick. You can see the escape wheel turning there. Right, before we take the movement apart, I'll name some of the parts that are easily visible. So you will know what their correct name is. Going side mainspring. Strike side mainspring. That's a hammer down there obviously. That's a hammer spring that keeps tension on the hammer. That's the rack. That piece there. That's the snail. This is a winding arbor, the key goes over that to wind up the mainsprings. This is a flirt, call a flirt here. That's the flirt spring with an extremely dodgy soldering job done on it. We'll have to check that later, see if we can improve that. little piece in here that's not particularly easy to see that's the gathering pallet with it has three pins on it as Asian ones tend to English and German ones tend to have one pin on them right put it over there now that's the suspension spring that's the pendulum leader the bob sits down there, that's the crutch. That's the part that we adjust to put a movement in the beat. That's the fly, the escape wheel, the pallets. And that's about all we can see on that at the moment. Right, first thing we'll do is we'll have to let down the springs. So I'll have to find some clamps for those. And see what size we're going to need. It's 
pretty tight in there. If we can get in underneath. Nope, not very easily. I think that's that's not going to fit either. Mm. Yes, it is. Just use that big one in there. I'll have to wind that spring up a tiny bit first. Pretty tight. It's almost fully wound, I would say. Let's get. We can force that back. That's got him. All right. Now I'll have to turn the movement upside down. So I can see where the the click is. Right in the back there. So, put our let down tool on, keep a grip on it, this isn't going to be particularly easy actually, it's going to move, put our screwdriver, In under the click, I'll let the spring wind down a little bit, making sure that we keep the main spring clamp in the center. Go back to our up here. Tight yet or not? No, but it's getting there. All right. It's a bit tricky to do on camera. I really need another hand on this lot. So I'll get this mainspring clamp set and then I'll come back. Wind the spring up a little bit. Well, Checking to see if the main spring clamp will fit on it. Still a bit tight. It's pretty well wound up now, actually. I don't think that'll go much further. Check and see if we can get the clamp on just it's all right just gonna spin round now so now see the click there that's what I've got my screwdriver under slightly increase the tension on the spring lift the click let the let down tool slide slowly around in your hand as the spring unwinds Keep going until the pressure is all taken by the mainspring clamp. Mm. 
we go, that one's set. That's the other one I did before. Right, both springs are now contained. start to take the movement apart. I've already checked. This is a this is a spanner we require to undo the nuts. Loose them off a tiny bit, make sure it works. Now we'll start removing the pieces and putting them in the relevant dishes. We'll start off by removing the pendulum leader and the crutch. And on these type clocks, how we do it, we put a pair of pliers into here and slowly push them open so that the pivots drop out. a little bit tight. We remove that out of the crutch. Leave that there for a moment while we take some of these other parts off. We remove the the circ clip. on. Oop, don't lose that. It'll now just slide off. Also has a spring underneath it. As you can see, there it is there, that's a spring, and it's clipped over the top of the front plate. So we'll pull that out, that comes off easily enough. It's a flirt, just sits in there, right. We'll take the flirt off next. Oop. Over there. Put the clip over with it. Undo this nut, remove the spring, Pretty homemade that is. 
just a piece of copper with the spring solid onto it. Here we go. Put it over the flip. Now I'll take the snail off. those over there this piece here is called a cannon arbor that's a minute arbor now what have we got let's fix the right I have to take the plate off first Can unhook the spring. And you should be able to unhook the spring for the hammer. Let's see how there we go. It's been done. Springs are contained, all the front pieces are off. Alright. Over there. Start to remove the, the nuts holding the, the plates together. Now, before we take the plates apart as ever. We remember there can be a little bit of pressure from the springs still running up through each of the trains, either or. So we have to be careful when we're lifting the plates. We lift them very slowly. Oh, that should be a right wheel. <clears throat> so I said there, there could be some power left in the train, so put a finger across the top of the wheel, slow it down. 
so it doesn't damage anything. That's that. It's all pretty tightly together. Okay, they're right. Now we've got to get the bottom ones off. Get a screwdriver in top of that and lever it up a little bit. And on the other side. They certainly are very tightly held in there. Heaps of oil running off everything in there too. Yep, they fixed they can't come out. Alright, I'll take the rest of the top plate off camera and then I'll come back again. Well, that wasn't easy. But I had to lever these two pieces off here with a hefty slip. Look at all the oil on that. Wow. Oil must have been cheap in those days, I suppose. Now, a lot of people use oil as a remedy to get things to work. If they don't work properly, just keep covering them with oil. Now we'll have another go at taking the top plate off. Better, I think. Yep. Still very gently. Few of the wheels have dropped out. Take the crutch out. That piece there. That over there. Before we go any further. We'll put the wheels in that fell out. Remove the hammer. Hammer lever. Looks like it's got blue tack or something stuck on there. Probably trying to dampen the sound of the gong. We'll clean that up before we put it back on again. What a filthy over oiled movement this is. I've already destroyed a pair of gloves. We've only just taken the top plate off. And I'm checking position of wheels and I've got oil all over the top of my desk so I'm not particularly happy with that but anyway we'll have a look and see what we've got 
before we start to put the parts into the ultrasonic cleaner to clean them, we need to remove the springs from the grape wheels. So we'll put the going side spring into our spring winder. Connect the bottom of the loop on it. And then wind up the spring, tighten it, so we can remove the mainspring clamp. Now we reverse the flow of the wind up, slowly unwind the spring. Now we'll remove the great wheel from the spring winder. And, and attach it from the spring. You can see it's a pretty massively long spring. On this movement. I'll wind it up a little bit. That's the spring, and it keeps going on and on, very long. I'll put that aside for the moment, and I'll take the other spring off. I'll clean them and put them in separate bags and mark them. I'll put a link in the comments section below that will take you to a video that I've done on how to clean and grease springs so I won't bother doing it in this video that'll show you exactly how it's done right I'll take the other spring apart then we'll get the parts ready to put into the ultrasonic cleaner while we're waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner to come up to 30 degrees temperature it's being preheated we'll take the movement parts and get them ready to put into the cleaner the easiest way to keep the parts separated to make it easy so you can remember what's what is to put each train into a piece of wire that holds them all together. Escape wheel. Third wheel. Second wheel. Twist them up a bit. There we have them. Put the front plate in, cut another piece of wire, we'll thread the strike side train onto it.
fly. Warning wheel. The one with the pin on it. Second wheel. Twist it over, keep them together. Those two parts in there. them together and they go the going side train put the back plate in Now the four nuts that hold the movement together, we'll put them in a little mesh cage so we don't drop them in the bottom of the ultrasonic cleaner. Strike side main wheel, great wheel. That there, the going side, great wheel, that there, and that's about it, everything else has got steel on it so we can't put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. Right, so there's all our parts. Now there's all our parts. As soon as the cleaner comes up to temperature, I'll put them in. We'll clean them for five minutes, no more than that. We don't want any pitting on the brass. Then we'll take them out and we'll come back to the bench and see how clean they are. All the parts are back from the ultrasonic cleaner now. They're all looking pretty good. So in the next video, we'll check the pivots and the bushes, see if anything needs rebushing, and just do a general check out to make sure everything is working correctly before we assemble the movement. All the parts in the movement have now been removed from the ultrasonic cleaner. And we polish the pivots and the arbors, as you can see there, looking nice and shiny on 3600 mesh micro mesh. So now we're going to put each individual wheel in between the top and the bottom plate and check to see how the pivots fit into the bushes and whether we need to do any rebushing. We'll start off with the first wheel on the going side. It's there. Put the top plate on.
pivot goes into that push there. There, and we'll put that one in there. Post aligned. Okay, that's all right. Now, spin him round, spins very freely. Now I'll have a look in that bush there. See what we've got in the way of movement. Very little. Now we'll check that one. There's a little bit of movement in there. That'll have to be rebushed. I'll mark that on the back with a felt tip pin. Check the front one again. No, that's pretty good. The back plate, you can see how sloppy that is. That'll have to be redone. Back. Take the top plate off again. Mark that bush on the inside so it's easily seen. On there. Now, second wheel goes there. Top plate on again. Line up the posts. Those posts got a little bit of a bend in them. They don't fit together very well. Bring that one up to there. Okay. Spinning very freely. Now we're looking at that pivot in that bush there. That looks all right. Now that pivot in that bush there. It seems to be all right too. As for end plate, you see it moving back and forwards freely. So we won't have to rebush either of those two. Top plate off again. Put aside. Now the escape wheel goes there. Line 
shine that post a bit better. Not too deep down there. If it goes in there, that's looking better. Escape wheel on you very freely. You're looking at that pivot there. That looks right. That pivot there we're looking at. A little bit of movement in that one. I'll mark that on the outside. We'll go back and check the front one. That one there. Mm, marginal. Bit, better do both. Right, so that's three on the going side train. Take the top plate off, mark those on the inside, and there, and that one there. Now I'll do the same for the strike side. First wheel. Up to there. That pivot goes in a push there. And align the posts. Click all in. Okay, going to check that pivot there. Doesn't seem to be too bad actually. Checking that pivot there. That one's a bit wonky, we'll have to redo that one. Mark that. Go back and check the front one again, seeing the back one has to be redone. I tend to prefer to do them if one's bad, to do the two of them. So we'll just check and see. No, nope, that one's all right actually. Right, we'll take that out. Mark the bush we've got to replace. Okay, next wheel 
This is a warning wheel. You can tell because it's got a pin on it. That's better. One, two. Line that pivot. There. Line the warning wheel pivot. Goes into there. We're looking at this pivot here this time. Yeah, a bit of movement in that one. And then that pivot there. Yep, I'll have to redo both those. So I'll mark them. fly goes there got a bit of bushing to do on this one by the look of it line the posts Pivot goes in there. To there. Now we're checking that pivot there. Mm, a bit of movement in there. Okay, both of those. Move the top plate. I'll mark the the bushes that need replacing. Well, that looks like there's only two in there that don't need to be replaced. In which case, we'll replace the whole lot while we're doing it, which will bring the movement up to speed again. So we'll have to do the whole lot. That'll be our next video. Right, we're ready to start rebushing our Korean 31 day movement clock. We'll start off with the first wheel on the strike side, that wheel there, which we know goes into that hole there because we've marked it with a felt tip pin. First thing we do 
we have to measure the diameter of the pivot. 1.43 mil. So, I write that down. One point four three. Now we need to find out what size bush we need to fit the one point four three mil pivot. So we have a look down here. One point four three, number forty seven. is 1.40, 48 is 1.50, so it's obviously too big. So we'll take out a number 47. Number 47 bush. Pop that in our tray. Lid back on again so we don't lose them. First thing we do always is put the bushing in our hand and try to fit the pivot into it just to make sure we've got the correct size and it doesn't fit. Right. Put the wheel aside. We've got the diameter of the pivot and it was a number 47 version bush. So we'll write that down, 47. Then we'll read along here, see what we've got. The outside diameter is 3.50 mil. Drop that down. From there. And that's our data for this bush. Number 47 version, the pivot is 1.43 mil. The external hole we're going to have to ream out is 3.50 to fit the bush in. Best to write it down, saves you forgetting it and reaming it out to the wrong size and having to start again. First piece we want is our center finding piece. Pop that into our machine. Tighten it down. Put a base on it. Now we put the plate, remember, that's the one there we're looking at onto the machine and drop the center finding tool into the hole. Spin it round to make sure we've got it centered. Then we'll put our clamps on, clamp it down, hold it in place. You can only clamp it once, that clamp can't fit. But we'll remove our center finding tool. And 3.50 is our final size. So I'll put the first reamer in, which is 2.47. When you're reaming out large holes in a clock movement plate, it's better to start a couple of sizes down. Less stress on the, on the cutter and it won't take you near as long to ream the hole out. So we're ready to start. Pressing down. 
gently on the top of the reamer. We then start turning the handle slowly, not too much pressure on it. Every so often you let the reamer up and wipe the swarf off it. Put it down again and feel that starting to bite a bit deeper now. Uh, it won't be long before that goes through. And there it goes. That's 2.47 mil hole we've now drilled in that. Now we put the 2.97 mil reamer in. And repeat the operation. Pressing down lightly, turning the handle, removing the swarf as we get some. It's gone through rather easily. Take the 2.97 out. This is our final reamer, 3.47. which is three hundredths of a mil smaller than the external diameter of our bush and it's that friction that holds the bush in place once again push down clean the rim up and there it goes through Take the reamer out. And put a hammer punch in. Using a pair of tweezers. Pick up the bush. Making sure that the, the oil sink, which is the dent you can see there, goes from the back of the plate to the outside. Place it in the hole, a little just fit, like so. Our ball peen hammer, we lower the hammer on top and a couple of light taps on the machine to make sure that the bush has gone in straight, not at an angle. Then a couple of solid taps to drive it home. There we have the new bush, it now has to be reamed out to fit the size of the pivot. Now take up the wheel, look at the pinion in the pivot and we'll see that it doesn't fit, which is exactly what we want. Right, now we have to broach the hole out till it fits the pivot. So, we need to check we need to check our brooches, see what size we've got. It's going to be too big. Yep. Down a size. That's the size we're looking for.
Now we fit the brooch into a pin vise. And now we're ready to start broaching out the hole. Place the brooch into the hole. When we're broaching out, the hole has to go perpendicular through the bush. We don't want it at an angle. So to make it a little bit easier, we align the brooch with the posts while we're turning it. And that gives us, if we keep those parallel, we'll be moving in the right direction. Slowly turn the brooch. you've done that check the wheel getting a little bit close up but not quite yet so we need the next size up so where's the next size up try that one Yep, we'll use that one for the next part of it. Put the brooch into the pin vise, tighten that up. Brooch back into the bush again. Align it. And very slowly twist it round, bearing in mind that these five-sided brooches cut very, very efficiently and it's very easy to take too much out. Right, we'll try the pivot again, see what we got. And it fits in. Okay. Relatively tight, which is what we want. So we'll leave that for the moment. We'll bush the top plate, then put the two together, and then check them out. That's a bush we're going to do this time. That one there on the top plate. Put that aside for the moment. Check the diameter of the pivot that fits into the top plate, 1.35 mil. Drop that down on our notebook. One point three five. Have we got our bushings? Number forty six is one point three, forty seven is one point four zero, so that should be too big. We'll take out a number forty six and try it. into our dish, top of the box on again, as always, push onto our palm, and try to fit, whoop, the pivot into it, it doesn't fit. So that's the size we want. Push aside, put the pivot aside. Back to our version box again. Number 46, outside diameter, three mil. 
Drop that down. Number 46. 3.0 mil. The first one we've done, we crossed it out so we don't duplicate it. Now we're on to the second one. Remove the hammer tool and the bushing machine and put in the center finding piece again. And align the pivot hole. Tighten that down. This time we will get both clamps. Check it once again to make sure it's going in, not touching that wheel there. Spinning freely. All right. Be careful of this wheel here with the gathering pallet on the other end of it. So that'll be a 2.97. So we'll go down to 1.97 mil for our first reaming. Push that up. Tighten it off. Now press down on the bushing machine, a little bit of pressure and slowly turn the handle and start reaming that hole out. Actually it's an old bushing unit. Turning as it cuts its way through slowly, don't press too hard or the torque will twist the reamer and at 50 bucks a time you can't afford to lose too many of them. You can feel it's starting to bite in now so I back off a little bit lighter. Here we go, it's through. Remove the reamer, 2.47 the next reamer, this is our second one, into the machine, tighten it off, lower it into the bush, start turning. You can feel it biting pretty quickly, and through it goes. Remove the reamer, 2.97 is the final reamer, we'll broach out to 3mm, hold the plate, turn the handle, and complete the hole. Take the reamer out, put the hammer tool back in again, tighten him down, pick up our bush, put it over the top of the hole, That hammer tool is too wide, it's going to hit that wheel, so we'll take that out. Replace it with an X size down, we'll check that. We might actually have to go down to the third side, see what we got. 
Yep, still going to catch. Take him out. Down to the smallest size. Test it. Yep, okay. Ball pin hammer again. Couple of light taps. To make sure the bush is driving in straight. Then a little bit more. Okay. Take the hammer tool out. Undo the clamps. Remove the plate. Now take up the plate. Try to insert. And it just fits. We may not have to braid that by the look of it. Right, let's check the fit. First wheel goes in again, bottom plate. Top plate on. Align the posts. Pivot goes there, that one goes there, spinning pretty freely. Right, let's check if there's any movement in the bush. No, that's nice and tight. This side, a bush there. Nope, lovely. Check a friend play. You can see it moving backwards and forwards there. All right, that's the first one. Right, I'll complete the rest of the bushing, then we'll come back. Then we'll put the movement together and get it up and running. Right, that's our new wheel. Let's have a look at the pivot. That one there. No shaking in that. Back one. In the wheel. Then, as always, check the wheel for end play. We move it sideways. You can see it moving in and out there. The pivot in the bushing. It's running nice and smoothly. That's the first bushing finished. Going to bring out a bag. Been cleaned and greased, ready to go. What we've got to do is we've got to increase that length there. Similar 
to that length there. So we can fit the springs into the movement. And we put it onto the winding arbor. Slipping, so I'm going to have to tighten up the spring where it sits on the winding arbor. To do that, we use a pair of pliers like so. Take the spring out of the spring winder. We take our pliers. Push them into the first loop, like so. Then holding the spring tight, we wind it round. And have a look, that's a little bit tighter, I think. Right, we'll do that again. What we're doing is we're making the diameter of that hole there a bit smaller so that it will catch on the knob on the winding arbor which is there. The winding arbor back in again. Put it into our spring winder. see if that's made any difference. Start winding the spring up. The spring is, the winding arbor is slipping in the machine. Continue winding the spring up. We can put a clamp on the bottom to hold it. Right, it's a savage spring that thing. That's two pairs of gloves down the drain. What we've got to do now, we've got to put the clamp on to retain it to retain the power of the spring but when we put it on we normally the clamp goes about there inch and a half two inches from the end this time we're going to have to put it inside like that to give us a big loop to be able to fit it back into the movement so we'll wind it down a bit more that now fits on which is where it would normally go about there what we've got to do now is push it further up so we'll push the spring out so i get the there we go and i've now as you can see pushed the main screen the main spring clamp from here round to there. Now we'll reverse the flow of the winder holding the spring so it doesn't jump out and there we have it finally after all that drama. Take the winding arbor out there we have it complete with a second set of chopped up gloves. 
Well, it's time to start putting the movement back together again. All the brass parts have been cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner. The springs have been taken apart on the winder. They've been cleaned with kerosene and re-greased and wound up again, clamped down with a mainspring clamp. As you can see, they're sitting here. So we'll start to put the movement back together again. Going side first. I'll put this first wheel in. Push that in a bit, it's down underneath there. It's a bit tricky to get in there. It's got him. Now over to the strike side, the first wheel in, turn it up again I think, slide it in under there, first wheel. Now put the top plate on. that wheel there that has a gathering pallet on it once we put that back in again sits in that hole there and these wheels up here are going to be caught up on that if we put them in now so we'll probably have to put the plate on and then put them in one at a time so we'll give that a try and see how it goes if we can hold the springs together long enough okay top plate on better it's still loose All right I'll put a nut on that post there that'll hold it side try and put a nut on there that should at least hold the springs in so we can have a look and see what we're doing Now those springs are seriously strong. So put the first wheel on the going side in there and align that post. nut on it that's held in that's all right wheel goes in there that 
one in first for the look of it. It's way down there. These massive big springs don't make it easy. To get parts to go where they're supposed to go. Last thing we want to do is snap a, a pivot off one of these wheels. A little bit, tiny bit more nuts. Get in there. Right. Naturally, that's come out. Put that in there. Put a nut on that to hold it. Now we can have a look and see what we've got in here. It's resting on the pin that holds it. First wheel, the going side, first wheel on the strike side, right, now we're going to put the, the other wheels in one at a time. Next wheel we're putting in. And it fits. It fits in there. That was easy. I have a feeling the other ones aren't going to be quite so easy. Now the escape wheel. Loosen that nut off a little bit, but not too much. We don't want it to all come apart again. See how we go, fitting this wheel in. This pivot goes there. Oh, it's going pretty close. Right, they're all in. And scope wheel goes into There. That wheel goes into there, tighten them down a bit. Not too much, you haven't checked them yet, you don't want to break any pivots off. No one. gathering pallet wheel pivot has dropped out. No problem, I'm putting back in. Got him, tighten the nut. Yep, he's in. You're going side trains right. You can see all the wheels working. Now back to the tricky side. Got 
three more wheels to put in there. Let's see what we've got in the way of room for a start. And we can decide how we're going to put it in. If it goes there, that is pretty close. I'll undo that nut just a tiny bit. I think we'll get that to fit in. A little bit more. Now align the pivot, which is one wheel and a fly to go. This is a warning wheel. You can see the pin on it there. And that goes could almost use a little bit more light on the subject here. Undo that tiny bit. To get that pivot in. Trying not to drop the other ones out at the same time. Which probably won't happen. one's come out, put him back in again, tighten down the nut, not too tight till we check it and make sure we don't break any pivots, that's in, okay, now the fly. go there goes in like that bottom of the fly is going to hit on that wheel so we'll bring that up a little bit like so it fits in there once again Loosen that nut off on that pillar, so we can slide the fly in, and it is Back that off a little bit more, and that should do it. Oh, look at The fly goes there. Make sure the other ones are in before we tighten it down. Tighten it part way, leave it there. the wheels yep too tight All right have to back that off a bit and take it out 
Make sure we don't lose the other ones. Okay. Tighten these nuts a little bit. Check the seat. And everything spins freely. Going side. And the strike side. Right, we're now ready to put the front parts on the movement. Tighten that down. We still have to put these parts on the springs. They go in there like that. We'll do that in a moment. I'll just check and make sure everything else is working properly. First up. Tighten the nuts. The top of the movement. To hold everything in place. While we remove the nut down the bottom and slide that piece in. Naturally, it's going to be pretty, pretty tight, so we'll have to move it oh, almost on, but not quite. Got it. First one, put the nut on. Tighten it down. The other one off. The next size there. The other side on now. Push the spring out of the way. Nut back on top. And tighten it down. now right so we're ready to put on all the front parts of the movement we're ready to start putting the other parts back on the movement we'll start off with the snail that piece there 
pop it over the motion works. Next piece we'll put on is the rack. Down the road. The rack on there. And when we're setting up the rack and pinion, Change that round. Right now, you remember we had a spring down here. Got to pull the spring back and catch it. Just there. On the front plate. Right. Go back over there. We'll come and adjust that later on. Now, We've got a shoe clip we're going to put onto there on the rack. Squeeze it on, there it is. Now we'll put this piece on. Goes up there. It also has a sur clip. There we go. It's got him. Guys, a little bit bent. I'll straighten that out. That's better. Sur clip goes there. Now we've got this pretty dodgy looking homemade spring. I've had a look at it. And that big blob of solder on it. If I file that down and make it neater, it's going to weaken that join and it'll probably break off. So we'll have to leave that as it is. First up, we'll take off this nut. Bit tight. Put the spring over the top. the pillar, put the nut back on, and tighten it down.
Okay, it's got him. I'm going to put this piece on. Slides over the top. Of the teeth. And lines up with that. Hole there. Tighten him down. That'll keep the snail in place, it won't move now. Now, the suspension spring and the pendulum rod. Go into the crutch there. And then once again, we have to open this gap here a little bit to let those pins fall into place. Open that up a little bit. Lift up the suspension spring, there we go, push it into both, lift that up a tiny bit, I've got to push that together, put it into the gap, and then squeeze it in a little bit. That should be right. Okay. <coughs> Root. Root. Right, now we need to put the, the hammer on. This piece here, I'll have to loosen those nuts there so I can slide it in, get it positioned. And then, having done that, we'll then attach this spring to it to give it some tension. And movement's all back together again now. So it's time for oiling. We'll start off with the back, turn the movement over, lay it down carefully. And we'll put a drop on each of the pivots. All of which have now been rebushed. Well, the plate's been rebushed, I suppose. Maybe not the pivots. Put on the hammer, a couple on the hammer, two, maybe even three. It's a bit wider. Cape well. Let's 
Second wheel. Warning. And the fly. We'll put a couple on the back of the winding arbors. Two, three. Okay, turn the movement over. This is the oil we're using. Mobius D5. Okay. Now let's oil the front. Turning with the hammer. One on the rack. Two on the cannon arbor. First wheel. Escape wheel. The pallets, do one there, there, that's that one, scope wheel, pallets, yep, there's a guy under there, the warning wheel. One on there. That's about that. Lift the movement up. We'll put a drop on each face of the pallets. And there. Next one is down in there. Alright, they all seem right. And that's the end of that operation. Next, we'll wind up the springs, take the main spring clamps off, and put the movement onto a test stand. Then we'll start to check the time and see how accurate it is and make adjustments as necessary.